Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting equation with z, z bar and the absolute value of z. In one of my previous videos I was kind of mentioning that we could kind of put these all together and this is how we solve it. Do you remember that video? Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about this one. So we have z plus 2z bar plus the absolute value of z or the modulus equals 14 minus 4i and we're going to be solving for z values. Before we start solving, think about how many solutions we can get from here. Or are there any solutions? What's your guess? Just make a guess and we're going to go ahead and check it. Okay? So whenever you have an equation like this, remember what I said in that video? Anytime you have a combination of z, z bar, absolute value, you should do something, which is replacing z with a plus bi. Why? Because it's the name of this channel, right? Obviously, that's the main reason. But the not so main reason is it's going to work. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Replace z with a plus bi. Of course, this implies that z bar is a minus bi. That's the complex conjugate. If you're new to complex numbers and or if you need a refresher, go ahead and check out my lecture videos and other videos as well, of course. The more, the merrier, right? So, what is the absolute value of z though? If z is that, the absolute value of z is just going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared, which is defined as the distance from zero, remember? So let's go ahead and plug everything in. That's going to give us, what? a plus bi, and then plus 2 times a minus bi, plus the square root of a squared plus b squared equals 14 minus 4i. So our goal here is to first replace z with a plus bi and then solve for a and b, right? Because once we find a and b, we found z, which is made up of a plus bi or which is made up of a and b. So how do we solve it though? We put the real parts together. So we're going to get an a here and a 2a here. That's going to make 3a. And I will add this radical. And then the imaginary part, we're going to have b minus 2b. 2b or not to be, allow me to say that. That's going to give us a minus bi equals 14 minus 4i. Now this part of the equation kind of looks a little scary, right? But don't worry, this is pretty good. So the imaginary part must be 4, which means, I mean negative 4, which means b is equal to 4. So once you know what b is, the rest is sort of easy. This sh whole thing should be 14. And we know that b is equal to 4. So it's going to be like this. 3a plus the square root of a squared plus b squared, which is 16, equals 14. Awesome. We can solve this because this is a radical equation. One thing to keep in mind. You must check your work with radical equations. And also, make sure that a is real, okay? So let's go ahead and subtract 3a. And then square both sides. When we square both sides, we're going to get rid of the radical. And we'll get 196 minus 42 times 2 is 84a plus 9a squared. Beautiful. Let's put everything on the same side, preferably the right-hand side. This looks like a uh, 9. I don't want it to look like a 9. I want it to look like a squared. Okay, that's better. Now we get 8a squared minus 84a. And then if you send that over, it's going to be plus 180 equals 0. Right? So I brought this over and I brought this over. Okay, cool. This should be correct. 84 is not divisible by 8, is it? No, because 4 is not divisible. But it's divisible by 4. So we can divide everything by 4. 2a squared minus 21a plus 45. And it's going to help. And now we're supposed to solve this equation for a, right? So what is a? It needs to be real, by the way. a equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared. 21 squared, do you know what it is? 441 minus, I just memorized it, 4ac. That's going to be 8 times 45, 4 times 90, that's going to be 360. Awesome. That's going to be a perfect square and that's just perfect. What is 441 minus 360? 81. And the square root of 81 is 9. So this is going to be 21 plus minus 9 over 4. Look at my nines. They're weird. Anyways, I can't write a 9. And then, exactly. So from here we get two things. 21 plus 9 over 4. 
and 21 minus 9 over 4. This is 30 divided by 4, which is the same thing as 15 halves. And this is 12 over 4, which is 3. Awesome. Those are the A values. Were we looking for A? Yes, and B. But B is 4. It's just that. Okay, B is always 4. So these are A values, and B is going to be 4. So if you put these two together, what do you get? A equals 15 halves. So our Z values is going to be A plus BI, 15 over 2 plus 4I. We could call this Z1. And Z2 is going to be A, which is 3, plus BI, which is 4I. So we get two solutions, and that's pretty much it. But this is not the end of the video. So hang in there. Stick around, because we're still going to do the second method. And I think the second method is usually cooler than the first method. I try to keep it that way. Uh, but again, it's up to you to decide which method is cooler. Okay? So let me know in the comment section down below. Which method do you think is better? And then maybe we can um, kind of hopefully tally the votes and see which one wins. Anyway, so this equation is equal to 14 minus 4i. At this point, are you able to guess my second method? If you watched my videos on this channel, like you've been watching for a while, you'll probably know what I'm going to do next because I've done this before. If you're new to this, that's perfectly fine, but still make a guess. And ready, set, go. We're going to go ahead and conjugate both sides. Wait a minute. How do you conjugate the absolute value of z? Hmm. That's the tricky part, right? What is the conjugate of the absolute value of z? Is it the absolute value of the conjugate or something else? Good question, right? Now, here's the thing. One thing to remember. Absolute value of a complex number is real. Just like the real part, right? Or the imaginary part. They're both real. So, when you conjugate it, it's going to be itself, because the conjugate of a real number, think about it, a plus bi, but b is 0, its conjugate is a minus bi, but b is still 0, so it's a. You see, the conjugate of a real number, the complex conjugate of a real number is itself, because the number is real. Okay, so when we conjugate both sides, like put a giant conjugacy symbol, whatever, then you're going to get the following. You can write the uh, conjugate of a sum as the sum of conjugates. So it's going to be z bar plus 2z, or not 2z, and of course uh, 2 will be unaffected, plus the absolute value of z, it's going to be unchanged, which is nice. And the right hand side is going to be 14 plus 4i. Let's just copy the original equation, z plus 2z bar plus the absolute value of z equals 14 minus 4i. By the way, I have not tested the second method, so I'm not exactly sure if this is going to work. Probably, but the issue with that is I kind of seem to have three unknowns. I was hoping to just, you know, solve this uh, eliminate by eliminating one of these things, but there's three things, so how am I going to eliminate? I mean, I can eliminate the absolute value, then I'm still going to be stuck with z and z bar, which is going to be problematic, so I can't really overcome that without replacing z with a plus pi, which kind of takes us to the first method. Anyways, I kind of got stuck, so hopefully you're going to help me clear this, and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.